Hello, it's Joe Lyons. This is the fourth video I'm doing in this series where we're just demonstrating how to log into a website uh, using web scraping and auto hotkey. So, um, as I do more and more, I'm going to explain less of the fundamentals um, and best practices and just demonstrate it. The, the point of these videos is really to help show that, you know, depending on the page you're working on, they have different things available and you would probably tackle it a little differently. So, let me launch my uh, script writer. So this is my web scraping script writer. Um, now when I hold down control and hit the button, this comes up and it allows me to automate writing my syntax. Um, gives me little templates that I can use. And so this is my, I'm using site, it's my script. The first thing we're going to do, I'm going to connect to this page, so I'm already on it. Let me go ahead and grab, let's see the URL. Uh, because, of course, whoa, look at that, and look at lovely Gmail's stuff. Um, let's change this to here. All right, and we're going to now let me go back to that page, and I'm going to reload it on just that and see what happens. Yeah, I figured it probably... Now it's trying to log into my current user, but somehow... Sign in with a different... But I'm not... I thought I wasn't signed in. Learn more. See, when I click this, I just wanted to sign out. Come on. Signed out. So it is signed out. So that's weird. It's signed out, but it still knows I'm me. Yeah, okay. Um, so let's just stick with this one. All right. We're going to navigate to this page. And um, so first, I haven't uh, connected to the IE window yet. So I'm going to get a pointer. I'm going to get pointer to the current IE window, right? The last active tab. This is the function I use that does that. I'm going to move that down below because doesn't matter where your function call where your function is it's where you call it from right and that's this wb get that's this function and that's going to store a handle to the current ie window <coughs> what i'm going to do though is because i'm not always going to be on that page right i want to navigate to that page or at least check if i'm on it and so we can do a quick i'm going to comment that out we can do a quick look and make sure i got my pointer correctly so i'm going to do a message box of wpwb dot location URL. Now when I save this, reload, oh, I need to launch it, launch it, and run it. Notice this string here, that is what was here, right? It went to this IE window, got the active window, and then said, hey, what's the URL of this tab that we're on here? And pulled it back for me. So I know now that my uh, object is working correctly, I have the right window, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to say, <coughs> I'm going to change this, get rid of the message box, and say, you know what, I, I could type it, but I'm a terrible typist. That's why I have this tool, right? So, page navigation, navigate to page, and here, you know, I've been doing these where I basically put them into here, right? Like you can see this one, but let's change that a little bit, right? Let's put it in as a variable. So, I'm going to put in page here and up here. I'm going to define my URL there, um, just to show you you can pass a variable to this function call, right? And now let's come back here. I'm going to I'm going to hit my home button just to get off of that page. Come back into this, save it, reload it, and now when I run it, you should see it's going to navigate to that page, right? Which is what it did. The thing I didn't do though was um, because I didn't have anything after it, it didn't really matter, but it navigated here, but I don't know if it actually finished loading or not, right? And that's the thing with browsing. If you send the keystrokes, or not keystrokes, but if you pop try to populate this form, but it doesn't exist yet, because um, the page has to load, you'll run into errors. And so, again, I have here, I say uh, page navigation. I'm going to navigate, I'm going to wait for the page to load, right? And this is just a two-line thing that basically says, hey, for this current object we're looking at, if it's busy or if it's not for, which is done, then it'll keep, this is a, a two-line loop. Because this is just one line, um, I don't have to put it in brackets and on a hotkey. And so it's just going to sit here, sit here, sit here until the, basically it says it's done loading. And then we're going to move forward. So now I need my uh, WB2 learner tool. What I need to do is basically see what I want to fill in this form, right? So I need to see how I can grab that. Now, they, looks like, not surprisingly, Google has defined it well. Both the name and the ID are present. And you can see them down here, right? Input name. 
name equals email, right? And that's where you say name, email, ID equals email, and that's what this is pulling from. These are just both, these are great things to use. Um, this one, let's go ahead and use, uh, we'll use name um, just to show as I think the last one I did was on, on using the ID. So they're both, the text is the same, but depending which one we want to use. So let me go back to site. And I'm going to say in here, I'm going to set on page. I'm not trying to get a value. I'm trying to set a value, right? And I'm going to, what I say, I'm going to use the name. So I'm going to set the name. Now notice name is an array, right? So here you'll see there's an S. I get elements by name. And this looks over all the names on this page. And under the document thing, this is the DOM, right? It's going to look for the one that has email. And because it is conceivable there's more than one that, that says email, um, we're going to grab the first one because these are zero base. This is grabbing the first one. And I'm going to say, we'll use that email address. And now when I save this, oh, you know what? So here's what I was doing in the other scripts too, right? We um, logging in the other pages. If we're already on this page, I don't want to navigate to the page. That's just wasting time, right? I happen to already be there, so why would I navigate? So we already demonstrated. Um, let's do this. Oh, oh no, I need it after the variables defined. So I'm going to say, I'm going to put in some logic here. If I'm going to use a bracket pwb.location URL does not equal, oops, um, page. And now I'm going to put this in brackets because I want it to go from here down to here, right? So what that's going to do is it's going to say, all right, get the pointer to the page, right? And and this page, you know what, let's move this up one more just to keep it clear because I've defined my variable up above and then I kind of get into the web scraping stuff. So pointer to the page and then I'm going to check and say, hey, let's, let's get the location of the URL. If it's not equal to this right, then go ahead and navigate to it, wait for it to load and stop. If it is equal to it, then it's just going to skip past this whole part here, right? It's not going to do any of it. It's going to jump down to here, and that way, if I happen to be on the page, I don't have to reload the page. Um, so I'm going to put in email, so now I'm going to save this. You can always tell them site with this asterisk here. It's not saved, so I saved it, reload it. Now when I run it, notice it dumped it in here. Um, I didn't navigate away from it, and now I'm going to have to hit next. Now, unfortunately, when I hit next, which is fine, um, but the URL is going to change, and that means the next time we run through this, it, it will not be on the original page. And so it's going to have to navigate through that, click next, and then go forward. Um, I could skip those other ones, but what I'll probably do is skip this um, the next time we do it so we can do it all at once. So I need to click this next button. Oh, interesting. So they didn't, they don't have name, they don't have ID. I'm sorry. I'm looking. I'm looking here. I'm an idiot. Um, so here's sign in um, and next. So they they have both. Um, let's go ahead. Since we used name before, let's use name again. So we're gonna just copy that line, and I'm gonna change that to. You know what? I I always try to copy and paste because I'm a terrible typist. Um, and of course, we don't want to get a value to it, right? We want to click the thing. And that's just a um, function call where we're going to click that element. Um, and with any luck, we're going to save this, load it, and run it. There. Oh. Oh, so apparently I don't have that as, as one of the, So I don't want to change it there. That would be stupid, wouldn't it? Um, so, all right, I think that's one. There we go. So that, oh, and look at that. So if I notice it right, they, they do an interesting thing where um, it didn't navigate to another page. In actuality, this is a great one to test because the fact that that, that didn't move, let's double check this and see here. Yeah, that looks like it's the same URL. So it didn't nav, oh. Okay, so it's just, um, it is a little, but that's just a parameter it's passing to it. So I think, I think it still might have been on the same page, um, which will be interesting because we could have possibly have done, um, said click and then hit the next thing without even navigating to the next page. So anyway, we'll go back in here. Let's add in password. Password is defined. Look at that. They 
why would you do that anyway? All right, so we're gonna we're gonna borrow from the name, and I'm gonna, whoops, put in password, um, <laughs> and then set the value to be equal to. And now I'm gonna put in the wrong password because the this goal here is just to show you how it works, not to actually log in correctly. Um, so I'm gonna put my my stupid password, which isn't the password. Um, and and then of course we need to click the the button that's blow it again um, and I'm hoping that that actually did change so sign in now that see that's interesting so I wonder if we're actually clicking the same button again that is really interesting so I can really be lazy and copy that and move that down to here what we probably want to do is put a little bit of a sleep in here Let's say 300 just to let it have a breath in between sending these things because you'd notice there was some action here. I just I don't know. I don't think we actually navigate to a new page, but um, it 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 might take a little bit of time for that to load. So I'm going to save this, reload it. Now what's going to happen is it'll go back and probably go to the first one, submit it, <coughs> then submit the password. Hopefully hit sign in, and then uh and then it'll tell me there's an error because it's not the right password. So let's see. Ready? Go. There we go. So if you saw that, that was fast, right? But it, it went in and it, it went to the first one. We didn't navigate anywhere, right? It went to the first one, um, submitted it, went to the next one, entered the wrong password, which is what I knew, clicked sign in, right? And then it came back and said, hey, wrong error, you know, give it another try. But that's how you could uh, automate logging in with... Uh, auto hotkey into Gmail or of course YouTube and um, what else do they own now besides the world um, uh, there's a couple others where you can just log in with this and, it, and that's what they're using for um, for YouTube and for oh Google Plus um, so it's the same sign-in and uh, and that's it thank you